Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Dwayne with Off Grit. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process of building rebar cages and pouring concrete for footings DIY style. Enjoy. This is called a compact metal bender and I'm using this to bend squares to hold up my vertical pieces of rebar inside the footings. There's a total of 36 squares, all made by me. Next part of the process, I cut rebar ties. Basically, it's just a spool of wire, and I marked on a 2x4 here a two foot section so I knew where to cut it. And I cut each piece, fold it in half, and then you'll see how I configured it to tie it around the rebar. So I tried to simplify this process by, you know, using just the rudimentary tools that I had out here and I just set up a couple saw horses and put a 2x4 down, a couple 2x4s actually, and you can see here where I set the squares, uh, I had a mark on the 2x4 um, where I had the center one and then basically here what I did was I took a tent stake and uh, filed the end of it down here to make a rebar tying tool. Um, you could do it with an Allen wrench, I've seen people do it that way, but basically this just helps when you tie the rebar to be able to remove the hook easier. Um, so you'll see how this thing works. It had ended up working really well. Now I have them laying on their side because although they'll stay up, the wind's blowing a lot and they, they're still going to be wobbly because you're, all you're using is wire ties to tie these together. So they're not going to be super stable. So probably the hardest part of this whole process now is actually going to be doing the concrete work. Concrete work is never easy. Um, so basically I decided to do everything by hand out here because I am doing a stone masonry stem wall. 
So I couldn't just have a truck of concrete come out for that part of it. And, um, you know, I could have just had the truck come out for these footings. Um, to be honest, if I had it to do again, that's what I would have done. Because even though I did save some money by DIYing this, I don't feel like I saved enough money to justify the time spent. So um, in the future, obviously, I would just have a truck come out and do it. But for this purpose here, it wasn't like a huge deal. Like I said, I still save money and every little bit helps when you're building a house. You'll see things start to add up real quick and everywhere you can save money is always good. So, um, and then here I think what I'm doing is I'm digging out uh, some of the holes like it rained a while back and you know, since it's been a while, I had to re-dig out some of the dirt and make it so it fit these cages. And of course I run in the stones. I told you guys the ground is so hard out here. So, so anyways, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing here and now you're gonna see me pouring concrete yay So this is the hindsight part of uh, the process here where I can look back after I've done this and say what I would have done differently. Um, and the truth of the matter is, since I was doing each one of these holes individually and I was pouring the concrete myself and it was a slower process, I could have actually just wet set these vertical pieces in the ground, um, you know, and probably been okay with it. Um, I ended up wet setting another piece in the center of the square anyway, so there's a total of five vertical pieces in this uh, footing. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's part of the learning process. I do have to put um, rebar horizontal strips of uh, rebar running uh, through the stem wall that are going to tie into these footings anyway. So, you know, I, it's still, like I said, it was something where I learned something in the process, but in hindsight, I'm going to guess probably that I, I wouldn't have done it this way exactly, but it still works. Alright, so I calculated all this out um, after I had done these holes and it came out to over 12,000 pounds of concrete aggregate and about 21 bags of 94 pound uh, Portland cement here. I went with roughly a 15 to 16% mix here of Portland cement to concrete aggregate and um, you know it, it was a learning process and like I said if I had it to do again if I were gonna give you advice just have a truck come out and do it uh, just make sure that your cages are in place uh, that's how most people do it anyways uh, but the fact that I'm you know making this a little more complicated with a stone masonry uh, like a slip form stone masonry stem wall all the way around I kind of wanted just to keep control of this whole process and move slower because there's just a lot of unknowns in this for me. So um, I decided to do it myself. Um, but like I said, in hindsight, just have a truck come out. All right, 
so basically just imagine me doing this over and over here uh, 12 times total and uh, this is a concrete vibrating tool and basically this just goes in there to make sure that uh, get rid of all the air pockets and things like that in the concrete pretty simple tool but it's cool um, this is a good place to leave off to folks um, we're going to come back to this and just keep taking you through the home building process so thanks for watching